Hi, good day. My name is um, Chris Monar from South Trinidad. So today I'll be presenting this paper um, that uh, was a part of a related work for some work that I was doing with the um, Banking Institute in India. So with me and Dr. Paul. So this is a real interesting, um, really interesting, interesting paper for several reasons, right? Um, so for one, usually in, in Instagram, we just take up some background. What we try to do is try to hide data within different aspects of the image, right? Of course, when we do that, we modify the signal in some way, there'll be some distortion. So it's basically this, this sort of um, trade-off between maximizing uh, embedded capacity while minimizing distortion. Now, uh, specifically in the transform domain, um, what did it, what did do for, 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 for this type of um, reversible hiding schemes? They take the image and block by block, they would go through and they would represent that particular pixel block, usually an eight by eight block as a, as a signal, right? Um, so in this case, they transform into usually DCT or DWT, right? Um, discrete cosine or discrete wave that transforms. And what they would do is that they would generate a coefficient matrix. And this coefficient matrix would represent um, the strengths of different types of, of um, cosine waves. So in this case, for DCT, right? And then you would apply a quantization table to that, and then you would get this, this output here. So this quantization step here is where you have the, the loss, right? So, so, so most, most JPEG, most, um, most types of things in the transform domain, they, they have this sort of loss, lossy step here. So when, when you, after the step, you can't really recover the original image, right? But what's interested is most of the times, once you choose the appropriate quantization table, um, you, you focus really just on the important components of that signal, and then you have a lot of this redundant space, right? And then this space now is what is um, usually entropy encoded. So they would do a sort of zigzag type scan, and um, it would generate a, a sequence with a, a lot of repeats, and then they'd use like a move to front technique to 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 reduce the the um, number of bits required to represent that information further. Right. So what they would do then is when they when they're reconstructing now um, these when they take these coefficients and they multiply by these stuff in the quantization table, they get something that's approximate to the original DCT representation of the image. Right. So that's typically how transform the transform domain techniques work. So what they would usually do is that they would try to modify these coefficients here, right after the quantization step, in a way that would minimize the overall distortion in the image. Right. But a lot of the techniques, they didn't really look at the file size as well, right? So now we have like sort of three competing um, three, three competing objectives here, right? So you want to maximize embedding capacity, you want to minimize distortion, and then you want to minimize file size, right? So that was the first interesting thing about this work. This paper that, that re uh, really caught my eye was that um, they, nobody ever considered the file size in any meaningful way, right? So what they did was they, they took this now and they sort of generalized it to so, say, so, all right, so the the um the general framework for the for transform domain techniques is they have this information segment, you bring it in here, you work out the transform, then you quantize, and then you entropy and code, and that's how you get the image, right? So obviously any change, right? Any change in any of those coefficients would have an effect in terms of the increased file size. It, it may introduce embedded capacity depending on how the coefficient was modified, because sometimes changes have to be made so that the original coefficients could be recovered, right? Um, so they don't embed any secret bits with that particular change, right? And some of them, they, 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 they can, um, those changes, so two purposes, one to hide secret information or, or also, also enable reversibility. All right, so, so that's the general, um, general setup, right? So once you change something in the codes here, then you know we have this sort of effect between between visual visual distortion, embedding capacity, and file size. So so how they put all this together, their model now is okay. Well, they have this this input signal, which is this image. You divide it up into several equal size blocks. So that'll be a set S. So SI is a particular block, usually eight eight by eight, right? Um, then the embedding capacity you represent that as um you know. So, so this embedding capacity here for each block um, kind of depends on um, on the, the reversible technique that you're using, right? So depending on the algorithm that you're, you're modeling here, this, this would have different values. Then, of course, for each particular, um, oh, this should have been the, my bad. Yeah, then for each particular 
uh, block uh, that would introduce some sort of distortion, right? So it should be D here, not this, right? And then um, the corresponding file size expansions would hold, right? So what basically what you'd want to do is you wanna um, you'd want to minimize the overall. So if we if we were to select, so this vector V here would be a decision variable that would determine whether or not you select to use a particular block uh, under uh, a reversible data hiding technique, right? So depending on the blocks that you select, right? Those would be one, the rest would be zero. So if we multiply that by the the um, pre pre configured expansion file um, file size expansions for each of the blocks, so these are the increase in terms of the file size that each block, um, when modified, would would contribute, right? So if we we do that, we will get the total file size, and then we can compare that to the original to get the difference, right? And then similarly for the distortion, right? If we if we pre compute that, then we can figure that out, and of course we would want the overall um, embedding capacity, right? You want to have enough capacity C such that if you um if you were to to look at all of the um all of the bits that you could hide, then you, you have enough space. So for example, if C is 10,000, we would want to select enough blocks such that we could hide 10,000 bits, right? So in other words, the the desired um desired capacity, um when it, you take that away from from the amount of things that you embed in, you should get some less than zero. So so based on that now, we have two, two sort of um, objectives here in terms of the file size and the distortion that we'd want to, to minimize. So moving on now, what they did was to simplify the, the computations for this um, optimization problem. They decided to um, model the, the um, file size expansion as a constraint, right? So essentially what they're trying to say is they want to limit the, the amount of um, bits that the, the image that that you produce the cycle image can be bigger than so it shouldn't be twice as big it could be probably 1.5 times or, or maybe just a couple of kilobytes so that's a parameter uh that you that you could sort of fine tune right um and then you know of course we're doing all of that again by making sure we have enough embedding the space to carry all desired message as well as to minimize the overall stuff right so so that was the, the setup so from here now this is a much simpler um a much simpler problem to solve than um this one where, where we we have two Two, two ob objectives to solve for here. Um, here we just um, simplify by making one another constraint and then um, and then we get to solve, solve for the variable V there, right? So in terms of setting up the problem, um, specifically the RIs, how they would be considered. So you would have this, this um, coefficient matrix, right? For the um, usually eight by eight, so it tends to be 64. Uh, they skip the first coefficient because that's a DC coefficient. Uh, at least under the the discrete cosine transform, that coefficient carries the most in um sp spatial amount of spatial information. So, if you were to modify that coefficient, you would see a huge change in the visual quality of the image. So that's typically, the first coefficient in the matrix is, is left untouched. Right. So that's where we go from two to six. So essentially, if we um are using that particular coefficient in some way um it's the idea is that it would carry some secret information right so we just sum all of the things that 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 we're using so this sign here um will either be zero or one depending on uh, whether that particular coefficient is embeddable right in other words has the ability to carry secret information so they they sort of um model this after histogram shifting um uh, based techniques right so with the histogram shifting techniques uh the maximum bed capacity a pixel would be one bit right now uh, it doesn't really generalize to all of the the well, theoretically possible reversible the hiding techniques because you it is possible to have one um one coefficient carry more than one bit right but in that case the sign the sign function here would just change and um you you, you would just uh, uh associate the number of bits that that one pixel um would carry right so so that should still work um, the in terms of the distortion, how they would work that out is it basically is the IDCT function as the inverse DCT, where given the requantized coefficient, you can then get mapped back down to the spatial domain, right? Um, so basically, you would just take the what to, to estimate estimate that what it was it took the, the difference um, between the, the the pixel the pixel blocks, right? So this is the coefficient, so S, SI and then the SI prime is the one that that they embed into. So you take the the difference between the coefficients and you uh, requantize it and pass it through the um, inverse density and you you would get an estimate as the the, uh, the distortion that would happen there. All right. So they modeled it like that. 
And then finally, in terms of the 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 um, expand size expansion, the EI, um, how that would work is for for encoding um, JPEG images at least they they use so they do the the, the zigzag scan and then they will move to front. And then on top of that, now they would apply a Hoffman coding or um, any type of entropy code at that point, right? So usually they would have a, a table, a Hoffman table that would be designed, um, that would be associated with a particular quantization table because depending on the quantization table that affects the coefficients and then based on the coefficients that would affect the, um, the probability distributions for the different um, numbers that you might get, so like a lot of zeros or ones or fives or things like that. Which would then affect the, the Hoffman table that you would use. So for the particular image, they, they would then take the, the coefficient um, from the block, right? So the modified coefficient, and then you just pass that through the, the Hoffman encoding and get an idea of the length of that compression, right? So essentially you're just taking the difference and um, dividing by the original. So we sort of get an idea of the percentage on in terms of the, the file size expansion. So they would do this for each block, right? So for each component signal aside, right? So they would do that for each one of those and then that would, that would generate the, uh, the values for, um, for these, these vectors here. And then you just apply, um, I guess, any sort of optimization. I think um, an integer programming might work here um, because it's a binary, right? You just choose it or you don't choose it. Um, so any sort of optimization solver could, could be the answer for that. Right. Um, so in terms of the experimental results, um, what they did was they looked at the two recent um, two recent reversible data hiding techniques in the transform domain, and they applied this methodology to it. Right. So again, remember the whole idea of the methodology is given a particular embedding scheme, they would then be able to work out whether pixel is embeddable or not by following that approach, and then they would fill that into the vectors, and then let then they would try to solve for that decision variable v. That would tell us whether or not it's selected block, right? So um, they would do that following these two um, embedding schemes by by Wang et al. and Hu et al., right? So after that, now they would then compare the visual quality and the file size over various embedding capacities where they followed their sort of selection procedure and, and those where they did the original um, the, the original um, em embedding technique as proposed by the authors, right? So this is just some graphs from their, their paper, and it has some really, really impressive results. So this is why this was so, so, sort of cool, right? Um, because if you see here, in most cases, they had like a, a almost a 1.5 uh, decibel increase, right? Um, and this is, so this quality factor here would be um, tied to a quantization table because the quality factor determines um, how much compression you want, right? So the higher the quality factor, the, the less compression, right? So the, the the more original the image would look in terms of the, the raw picture, right? And if you have a, um, a lower quality factor, then you're going to have um, plenty, plenty compression. So you see more artifacts, but then it will have a more redundancy. Right? So they compared it visually um, to the PSNR, right? So, uh, you know, the, the distortion that they had computed was basically modeled after the PSNR in terms of the PSNR is just a logarithmic scale. Um, that measures the sum of, um the difference between the squares in the original signal and the the stego signal, right? Whereas the similarity index had an interest in um so the structural similarity um measure here that they have that's a uh a, a, a formula that is used not to measure the the visual the visual quality in terms of how the two images look, right? Um, I mean, and then this is the ongoing era of research. How do you assess image quality? Is a, is a big topic right now. So we have the original one, which is we just measure the, the distance the modified signal is away from the original. And then you have the, the structural similarity where it sort of tries to give you an idea of if the information content is similar in terms of how we would perceive it. You know, the lines where we expect to be lines, there are lines, there are no sort of um, blues. So if you have expect, if you're looking like a road corner, we do expect it to see sort of jagged off the end. We expect to see a nice straight, straight line. So the, the structure of the, the image is, is sort of consistent. Right, so you see for these smaller um, embedding capacities, right, it was more or less identical. But then as they as they come down here, the um, you, you know, we start to see a uh, a um a, a huge divergence in terms of the the, the structural similarities. So the the higher the value is closer to one, is the better, the better the similarity, right? And and you can see here in the approved improved version, um, the 
proposed scheme was able to better select the blocks, right, that cause distortions, but it also, it, be, you know, what was really interesting was it, it, it chooses it, it based on this PSNR like thing, right, but it also preserved the structure of the image. And, and this was um, really amazing to the authors and, and to me as well, right, um, you know, that it, it was smart enough to, to sort of pick the right blocks to modify so that we wouldn't be able to tell, right? And, and this sort of held across um, different quality factors. So again, as the, the information content um, increases, um, you know, there's less room for, for redundancy, right? Because more and more of the, the pixels are, are sort of important, right? So as the quality factor decreased, you would have a lot more redundancy because, you know, compression, right? Uh, but as you have less and less compression, the, the information becomes more and more relevant. So. So you would find here that the, the, the deviation between the, the improved and the um the original one, you know, is, is, is sort of sort of sim, you know, sassanar, right? Um and, and same thing as you as you move up. Uh in terms of the embedding capacity, uh what we found here was that um the this this method was able to um get a, a lower file size in terms of the different payloads, right? So if you look carefully here, we would see the improved one, that's the one with all the star, right? Um, yeah, that's the one with all the star, right? You would see the, in terms of the file size expansions, um, it's it's really it's really not that not that big, right? So the, the improved, so the improved for using the two different, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention, they use two different data sets here, the UCI data set and the CVG data set, right? So when you, when you look at it in terms of the file size expansions, they, they, they really got some, some good, good results as well, right? So as the, the payload increased, the percentage of the file size uh, um, increase was, was decent, right? And this was a really, really big contribution to the field because most, um, most reversible data hiding techniques didn't consider, consider this, this sort of approach, right? So, uh, and sort of similar results as you would have moved ahead in terms of um, the, the, the quality part, right? So in terms of your runtime, uh, what we found was that if you would, this would obviously take significantly longer, right? So sometimes the order of like twice or three times as long, as long um, depending on, uh, on certain factors. And this is because it, it, for each image, you would have to, Will one make a first pass to figure out the, the values for those vectors? And then after that, it would then have to apply the optimization technique to find the, the decision variable V that would um you know minimize the, the different criteria. Right. Um so it, there, there's this trade-off in terms of the runtime, which is expected because you know there's no no free lunch. So while the work is interesting, um there, there should there needs to be some more more improvements in terms of how fast this competition could take space. Because I mean, these are in terms of the order of seconds, right? So, um, you know, if you're looking at us sort of like a real time system, so, right? so moving on from here, this, this sort of just um, optimized based on one front, right? So like how, how can this would be improved? Well, you could think about trying to find um, the curve at the, that, that sort of optimization curve that at the periphery of the, the different um uh, the different objectives so then we could actually quantify the actual trade-off between the visual quality the embedding capacity and the file size so you could think about the application as someone coming in and saying okay i want to have a you know maximum this visual quality i don't want the file size to increase by this much but i want to be able to embed you know fifty thousand bits and then once once you have that that curve that outside of the curve um, then we could um, actually scan it and see if that is a possible point that could be facilitated by a particular image, right? So that's the next steps in terms of um, how we plan to sort of improve improve on this. Route. So, so that's it. Yeah, these um, these references. Yeah, some some really really good work. Um, yeah, so let's sort of share that with you guys. Yeah, th thanks. Yeah, thanks, uh, Chris. Um, so you plan to do anything on, on, on this, or you was just reviewing these uh this uh papers for 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 the work with with India? Yeah. So yeah, we plan to um to work on that that problem where we try to find the function that links the um embedding capacity, visual distortion, and increasing file size. 
so that they will basically what they want to do is they want to apply that to um to hide the images and checks. Okay. So, so you mean try to get the optimal front? Yeah, yeah, the optimal front, yeah. Um okay. No, interesting stuff. And uh I guess one other place to improve things would be the in the um the uh, binary optimization problem, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I, I I don't know what to use. What, what, so what do you use right now? You know. Oh. For the integer programming. Aspect. Oh yeah, they, they, they didn't um they didn't say uh in the paper interestingly enough, but I I assume it would be um some integer one of the integer programming solvers you might find in any of the Okay. Okay. All right, thanks. Yeah, uh, uh, interesting stuff. Thanks. Thank you.